So code whisper is searching for the code. And yes, prime number code is there. Enter and voila. You can see we got the code here. So this is the code for the prime number. AI, 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 the trending technology. Everyone is talking about AI irrespective of the platform. It can be YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, everywhere where I go, I see the AI post. Now, the world of AI is not new, it's there from a long time, but last year, especially for developers, things has been changing a lot. Uh, so in 2021, uh, GitHub announced about Copilot. The public release happened in 2022. After that, we got ChatGPT at the year end, and now we got a AI code generator from AWS, which is the Code Whisperer. Now, Code Whisperer was available not for public, but you can apply and you can get the access. It started last year, but now it is available publicly. So basically, anyone can use the Code Whisperer. Now, of course, you have this AI tool. We already have the Copilot, and now we have Code Whisperer. In fact, if you remember, I have uploaded one of the video last year regarding the copilot. The thing is, whenever we talk about any AI tool, it can be for images, it can be, in fact, there are a lot of lawsuits has been filed against this AI tool. See, one of the problem with any AI tool is to make your AI work, you have to basically train the model. It can be for images, it can be for text. And whenever you want to train it, the question is, what kind of data you are going to use to train them? If you are using a data, uh, from the public repository, that's fine. But if you're, if you're using a data from the private repository, we have copyright issues, right? So most of the companies are not using data from the private repositories. It can be private images, it can be private text, or private data, or a private code. Now coming back to the public part, can we really use the data from the public sector? Example, let's say if you upload your code on GitHub, you have worked on it and now you're saying, okay, I have this project. I want to push this project in on GitHub as a public, public repository. But what if the AI model is getting trained on your public data? Do you give permission for that AI tool to use your data, right? Now, this was a lawsuit which has been filed on GitHub last year and the case is still open. Microsoft says it's into fair, fair use. Anyone can use public repository. But again, the case is still open. Now, Code Whisperer came, came into picture. Now, a lot of people on the public platform are talking about Code Whisperer as the killer of GitHub Copilot. It might be. One of the reasons is GitHub Copilot is paid and Code Whisperer has multiple schemes there. Okay, so that you can get it for free as an individual account. If you're working as a corporate employee and if you are working for your project, you have to pay for it. Now, of course, if you think as a, as a company perspective, do you think company will pay for GitHub Copilot or Code Whisperer? The answer is yes. Uh, the thing is, we know that once AI emerges, it will affect the jobs as well, right? Now, of course, it will not completely replace developers, but let's say for, for a particular project, you need, let's say, 15 people. Now, you only need six or seven, right? Because this six and seven people, they will be using AI. And that's why if you want to be relevant in this market now, you need to learn how to use this AI tool. So, of course, company will spend some extra amount for these developers so that they can use these tools and make a better project. One of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of Copilot, but I was okay with Code Whisperer is, now when you write a code on Copilot, of course it gives you the code, but it does not mention from where you're getting this code, which repositories it has been copied from or getting the help from. And that's where the issues of copyright or things will arise later. In terms of Code Whisperer, they say, in fact, I've read it somewhere that it will also tell you the references it is taking from. I was not able to find in my initial test. In fact, I just tried today uh, because of my health issues, but I will upload one more video if I was able to find how Code Whisperer gets the, uh, or shows the recommendations or shows the references from where it is getting data. And I can choose a as a developer if I want to use it or not. Okay, so let's talk about the Code Whisperer here. So you can see it is Amazon Code Whisperer. And uh, yeah, there's an option of individual uh, tier, which is the free one. In this, you will get uh, free for individual use, unlimited code suggestions, reference tracking. Yeah, they're saying reference tracking, but I was not able to see how they are doing it. I will try different code and see if I can get the reference tracking. And they also do security scans. Now, this is important. See, when you talk about writing a code, it's not just about making a code which works. You have to also understand that when you write a code, your code should be stable, your code should be scalable, and it should be secure. 
Now, when you're typing by typing the code by yourself, you have those things in your mind. But the problem is when you when you get a code from the code generation tool, how you are sure that this code is secure? It's actually securing your data, not exposing it to the outside world. And that's where Amazon Code Whisperer is smart in this case. They also provide you the security scan tools. You can do 50 scans per month. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on project level or file level or will it be automatic or you can set it manually because of course if it is automatic every time I make a change it will complete in one day itself. So there should be an option of setting it when to scan when not to scan. So we have this option otherwise if you want to go for if you want to see the pricing structure uh, there's also a professional version which is $19 per month which is not a big amount for companies and uh, yeah and the beautiful thing is if you want to get the account for individual you don't even need the AWS account you can simply get a builder ID and in future you can actually connect so code generation all languages in fact there's a language support as well uh, it supports few languages not all so if I go to documentation for code whisperer user guide okay so basically if you see the uh, setup you can do the setup for two things VS code and uh, JetBrains ID, of course there are other options as well, but I have, I have tried with this too. Uh, in this particular video, we'll show, we'll see how do we do that with Visual Studio Code uh, or VS Code. Otherwise you can just also explore on JetBrains IDs. Okay, anything? So they have a language support as well. So basically it supports 15 languages. You can see the list here, but the proper training has been done for five languages here. Java, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, and C Sharp. Uh, they also provide but it's not I think it's not perfect for this languages at this point the IDE support we have for VS Code and JetBrains so in JetBrains as well you can use it for uh, different IDEs this is for Java this is for Python you can try this out okay so now here you can see we have VS Code open let me just zoom it a bit okay so what you have to do is first of all you have to enable the extension so you have to go to extensions and you have to search for AWS toolkit and here you have to install this. So you have to say install AWS Toolkit. Once it is done, if you can see AWS Toolkit provides you the code whisperer, right? The AI tool to generate the code. And then uh, you can just click on this AWS tab here. So once you install it, this will not be enabled by default. You will see an option of start. When you click on start, it will ask you to create an account. Now, how do we do it? It's very simple. Click on that. It will show you a pop-up. In that, you have to choose personally. You have to choose an option, which is you, you will get three options choose personal and then it will generate a code for you just copy that code and uh, click on open and copy you will get next prompt which is the open the website go to the website enter the code next enter your email id just follow the steps and you will you will get a verification mail just uh, copy the code which you will receive in the mail and paste it there I, will, I wanted to show you this, but I have already tried and the account is already logged in. Again, not a difficult step, just follow that. Otherwise, you can follow documentation. It was properly mentioned. You can see, if you see getting started with VS Code and there's an option of Code Whisperer Individual. So they will show you the steps, how do you do it for VS Code and JetBrains. Okay, so now what I will do is, I will just say, I want to create a class here. I will say public class demo, right? This is a Java code and it is enabled now. So you have to make sure that this is running and then you can simply ask for whatever things you want. Example, I want a main method. So I can simply say main method, enter, and it should generate a code for me. And that's what it's doing. You can see it shows you the prompt. And now if you want to choose this prompt, or if you want to choose the suggestion, you can say tab and you can, you can see it, we got it. Of course, you have to close it as well, closing done. And now uh, I want a method to let's say add two numbers. Let's start with simple. So I will say, method to add two numbers okay and you can see we got the method here and so you have to say tab enter now it will generate a code for you as well you can see that we got the code if you don't want this code if you want next suggestion you can say right click or you can say right press arrow there's no other suggestion you can say tab and close so simple thing works in fact it can also help you for the next thing you want to do you want to subtract two numbers okay let's do that and uh, it will generate a code for you done enter okay that's done uh, let's say if you want to find a given number is prime or not so write a method to find a given number is prime or not okay code whisper is not activated so normally when it searches you can see code whisperer will be having a circling animation there but it's not doing anything so again it's a new thing new tool so it might take some time 
So now it is searching and it's not recommending. Okay. In fact, you know what I will do is I will also trust it that in the IntelliJ idea, in VS Code is not working that properly. And by the time we are doing this, so there's one more difference between Copilot and Code Whisperer. Codepilot is more of a general purpose AI tool which can be used for multiple languages. But I have seen Code Whisperer promotes more of the AWS code style. So for example, if you're building an application for AWS hosting, then it will help you more than Copilot. But if you are making a general purpose application, I think Copilot is good. But the question is, will you get affected with the copyright issues? In fact, I will set the link in the description for the previous video which I have made about the lawsuit and it will make much more sense. So I've tested the code here. Uh, in fact, I was doing some experiment. So you can see if you write this line and if I remove this part, it will give you. So let's see if that works now. So code whisper is searching for the code. And yes, prime number code is there. Enter and voila, you can see we got the code here. So this is the code for the prime number. In fact, if you can just see that, let me just remove this part and let me ask the code whisper to suggest the code once again searching for the code. So you can say this is one of the algorithm we have. If you said right, it will give you another algorithm. So you can choose which is the best one for you, right? So there are multiple algorithms available here. Also tab. Not just this, you can also add a code for the database connectivity. Example, the entire code, it is given by the uh, code whisperer, not the entire code. I have written these two lines, but this part has given by the co code whisperer. Again, I have not tested it fully, so I'm not sure will it do all the tasks or will it will help you. In fact, it helps you for block creation, for the code completion and it's quite helpful but the way we think about ai is still not here okay if you're thinking if you just write the problem statement it will give you the entire project no you still need to know programming and whenever i talk about ai tools for programming people are like okay should, should we stop learning programming now no the thing is ai tool will help you to write better software okay it will not replace you completely uh, but yes if you are still into that old zone of writing a code without using ai tool you might get replaced Okay, so that's the thing. So yeah, so still my first bet will be on Code Whisperer, not on Copilot is because I'm still not sure how Copilot gives the code. In fact, Code Whisperer had this reference. I'm still not getting this suggestion here. I want to know from where this is getting this code. It should say that here. At least it is giving the option. Maybe in future they will work on it properly. And I don't see this option in Copilot. And Copilot is not free even, right? Uh, code Whisper is even. Uh, check this out and let me know in the comment section your thoughts. And also let me know if you want me to create a full-fledged video on how to use Code Whisperer properly. Uh, in fact, I will try to do that in the upcoming weeks. So that's it from this video. Uh, will it kill Copilot? Not sure. But yeah, I have my big bet on uh, AWS. Let's see what happens. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.